na preparation for that, but we have read 1 Corinthians chapter 15 a while ago, and that is the message and the hope of Christians that our Christ and our Savior is alive. Kaya po minsan nakakapagtaka, um, may mga Kristiyano po, nasa simbahan na lungkot-lungkot pa. Ano po, para bang, uh, parang patay ang ating tagapagligtas. Ano po, parang patay po ang ating uh, sinasambang Panginoon. Uh, kung bakit na tayo, I serve a recent Savior, He's in the world today. But then, hindi po, mal- hindi po masaya, hindi po tayo, wala po sa ating mga mukha, wala sa ating mga boses, wala po sa ating mga uh, uh, kilos po ang, ang uh, uh, joy na binigay na Panginoon. But, hindi po ito yung preaching ko, but I just want to give emphasis to this. If you would if you would open your Bibles with me um, in first balikan po natin yung Bible reading natin kanina first Corinthians and let's read verse 12 because I believe po plain reading of this uh, short passage will give us uh, encouragement and joy Sabi po sa first Corinthians chapter 15 simula po natin sa verse 12 um, mabilis lang now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? So someday we're going to be resurrected. But if there be no, no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? If, and ito po yung dilemma. If Christ be not risen, kung hindi po nag ang Panginoon, then is our preaching vain. That means kung ano mang sasabihin ko mamaya, walang kwenta. Dahil po patay ang ating Panginoon. And your faith, yung pananampalataya nyo, yung paniniwala nyo, is also in vain. Yea, and we are also found false witnesses of God. False prophet po kami ngayon mga nagpipreach. If Christ is not, uh, has not risen from the dead, even you, you are false uh, prophets whenever you share the gospel. Because we have testified of God that He raised up Christ, whom He raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if, the, if Christ be not raised, your faith again is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. That means wala rin po tayong power over sin. Ibig sabihin, lahat ng ang ating flesh will always want to commit sin and we will have no victory over them because there is no Holy Spirit, there is no Christ na tumutulong po sa atin. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. Ibig sabihin, yung mga mahal natin sa buhay na namatay, wala na sila. Kung totoo, kung hindi po talaga nag ang Panginoon. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable, which is very true. Kung hindi po tunay na nag ang Panginoon, everything that we're doing is in vain and our life is very uh, is miserable. Sabi po ni Paul dito sa end of this chapter, kung palang wala rin namang resurrection ni Cristo, let's just drink and be merry. Diba? Magpakasaya na lang tayo. Gawin natin ang gusto natin. Why do we have to dress up? Why do we have to come to church? Why do we have to preach? Why do we have to go to the outreach? Patay naman ng Diyos natin. Pero sabi po dito, verse 20, But now is Christ risen from the dead. Yan po yung difference. That's the difference that we have with other religions. Buddhists, their God is dead. Muslims, their God is dead. And uh, Hindus, their gods are dead. All of those are dead and not re- re- rise, raising up again. They will raise up again someday uh, uh, to be judged by the Lord and to be thrown in hell. That is the only hope they have. Okay, if, if, we, if we can call that hope. But our hope in Christ, our, our Savior is alive, our God is alive. Kaya po mga kapatid, wala po dapat gloomy faces sa simbahan. Lalo na po dito, sa, dito po pag every Sunday. Lalo na po sa araw na ito, we are celebrating the fact that our Christ is risen from the dead and He has resurrected, He has conquered death, He has, he has given us eternal life. Kapatid, there's no reason to be sad. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what problems you have in your life. But coming to church, kalimutan po natin yan. Hindi po importa. If, sabi ko nga, nabasa ko nga kanina, if Christ has risen from the dead, bakit tayo we can't even raise, rise from the bed? Diba? Kristo nga, uh, na, 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 na buhay mula sa pagkamatay, pero tayo hindi pa tayo makabangon sa kama para lang makapunta ng maaga sa simbahan at magsamba sa Panginoon. And I believe that this, uh, this chapter... While we were re- reading that, it was a blessing and, if, and I tried to uh, finish a message in that chapter but then, nung pagbasahin niyo po, it's very doctrinal. Paul has talked about resurrection, the order of resurrection, sa pagbalik ng Panginoon and all of these things and it's just uh, not enough time for me to prepare. But we're going to continue here in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 
verse, uh, we're going to read verse 11 to 21. This will be the, uh, I think, I believe, the seventh uh, preaching here in uh, 2 Corinthians that I will be preaching. So let's all stand. Let's uh, uh, open our Bibles in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Let's read from verse 11 to 21. Until the last verse, 21. Actually, ako na lang po magbabasa. Sundan nyo na lang po sa inyo mga Bibles. The Bible says here in verse 11, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade man, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance and not in heart. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God. Or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now, therefore, we are ambassadors of Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you again for this uh, morning. We thank you for the uh, preaching that we have heard uh, this morning, even the lyrics of the songs that we have uh, heard. Dear Lord, we are truly blessed, Panginoon, that we know that we are serving a true and a living God. And that we, uh, what we are doing here this morning, Lord, is not in vain. And that we are uh, giving you our best in worshiping. I hope, Lord, and I pray that you uh, make our hearts right as we listen to the Word of God. I pray that, Lord, that you give us a humble spirit and an attentive mind, Panginoon. And bless me as I speak, dear Lord. I am, uh, Even though I have uh, uh, spent time studying this, but Lord, but without your help, without the Holy Spirit's movement in our midst, dear Lord, I know that this will just be in vain. I pray, Lord, that you anoint my lips. May this message not be a stumbling block to anyone but be a but serve as an encouragement and a challenge Panginoon sa mga nakakapakinig Panginoon uh, may, I, I pray Lord na ang inyong pangalan lamang maitaas at mapapurihan po namin ang inyong pangalan dalangin sa pangalan ni Jesus Amen you may be seated salamat po sa pagtayo uh, now uh, last last preaching that uh, in chapter 5 verse 1 to 10 we have studied about uh, uh, a new body and the promise of the Lord and, and heaven, the promise of the Lord in heaven. Now, dito po sa verse, chapter, uh, verse number 11 to 21, may kita po natin dito that uh, Paul has constantly, from chapter 1 to chapter, here to chapter 5, hanggang matapos po itong 2 Corinthians, he's constantly referencing his life to these people. He's con constantly ref uh, pointing to his life, to his manner of living, to the way he speaks, to the way he preaches. And, 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 and as, as he gives his life as an example, at the same time, he calls always God to be his witness. Palagi pong ganyan. Now, if we, if we have, if you know the life of Apostle Paul, he, is a he was a persecutor of the church. He never really liked Christians. He never really liked people who proclaimed the, the Christ to be the Messiah. And that's why what he did was, to his power, to what he can do, he persecuted the church. He was there trying to uh, uh, throw them out of cities, some, uh, giving consent to some of uh, the killings b before. But then, we know that one day, he encountered God. He encountered the Lord Jesus Christ, and then he found himself at the mercy of the Lord. And then he found himself uh, uh, looking at himself, looking at the glory of the Lord, looking at himself, knowing that he cannot really fight against that truth. He cannot really fight against the Lord. And instead, God turned his life around from being a persecutor to, us, to someone that we can consider the greatest Christians who ever, Christian who ever lived. And certainly, we can, we can compare Paul to other Bible characters. But one thing na, na consistent po sa kanila, they all had 
fully surrendered lives to the Lord. Fully surrendered lives to the Lord. And the Apostle Paul, here in uh, verse 11 to 21, showed us a few points of uh, ano yung mga magkita natin sa buhay natin when we are fully surrendered to the Lord. You know, the, the life of a Christian is, should be a life of obedience to the Word of God. Yun lamang po. The, the life of a Christian should, should be a life in, in, in accordance to the Word of God, in obedience to the Word of God, and also in, in uh, uh, worship and glorifying the Lord. May kita po natin dito yan uh, later on, the purpose of our lives. But, if, if we can see even in here in, in, in from, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, we see examples of people who are fully surrendered to the Lord. And also, there are also examples of people who are not fully surrendered to the Lord. Like Jonah. Even though he obeyed, he, even though sumunod siya, he obeyed what the Lord said, he was not really fully surrendered. Meron pa rin reservation. Meron pa rin emotion na nakatago. Kaya kahit na sumunod siya, binilas ng Panginoon yung preaching niya, binigyan siya ng resulta sa kanyang preaching, maraming tao naligtas, yung kanyang emotion and selfish desires lumitaw pa rin sa huli. Kaya po, he, he, he was not fully surrendered to the Lord. We can see even, even the lives of those uh, of Lot. Even though he knows God, he knows the Lord, he's not really fully surrendered to the Lord. But we can see a lot of people are surrendered. Joseph, fully surrendered to the Lord. David was fully surrendered to the Lord. And we see their lives, the glory of the Lord, what the Lord did in their lives, and how the Lord used them in, in, in their respective time. Sabi po dito, one, one, more, uh, one more example of a, a person fully surrendered to the Lord is Caleb. In the midst of people around him, uh, the nation of Israel, everyone, his friends, his family, sa kanya pong paligid, even all of, all of them are doubting God already. He showed them that he's fully surrendered to the Lord and he believes 100% that the Lord is their Savior and that the Lord will give them the land. Kaya nga po sabi sa Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 35 to 36, Surely there shall not one of this man of this evil generation see that good land. This is what, the, uh, what God said to these people because they have doubted because they disobeyed because hindi po sila naniwala sa pangako ng Panginoon which I swear to give unto your fathers pero verse next verse save Caleb the son of Japheneh he shall see it and to him will I give the land that he had trodden upon and to his children bakit daw because he hath wholly followed the Lord mga kapatid bilang kristyano bilang tao that claiming we believe God we have repented of our sins we have put our faith in God our lives should be fully surrendered to the Lord Amen. kung kaya po nating ipagtiwala ang ating eternity to, to the Lord how much more yung ating araw-araw na buhay how much more yung ating talento? How much more yung ating oras? How much more yung ating uh, labor at ating panahon, ang ating effort sa Panginoon? We should be fully surrendered to the Lord. Obey God in everything. Sa lahat po ng bagay. Make the Bible our final authority. Not only in doctrines and practices in the church, but also in our lives. Alam niyo po, we can only be script a scriptural church if our lives are scriptural lives. Kung hindi po ta, kahit po anong gawin natin pag-aaral, paggawa ng polity, pag-meetings namin mga preachers, pagtitingin sa salita ng Panginoon, kung ang individual lives po natin na hindi po according to the Word of God, wala rin po. Kahit na tama ang ating uh, procedure sa baptism, kahit na tama yung procedure natin sa transfer of membership, kahit na tama yung, yung, yung procedure natin sa pagbibigay, kahit na lahat na ito may tama pa natin kung mga buhay natin hindi rin tama po at according to the Word of God, wala rin. That's why ito po individual responsibility. Make the Bible our final authority. Sa lahat po ng bagay, sa mga desisyon, sa mga pananalita, sa mga ginagawa natin, even in our relationships. The Lord should be uh, 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 the God even of our relationships. Sa pagkikipagkaibigan natin, sa buhay ng mag-asawa, sa pamilya, it should always be fully surrendered to the Lord. Let the Bible dictate what we are to do in our lives. And this is what the Apostle Paul has consistently showed in his life. Not only in his life, but consistently and, and uh, uh, with great courage and, and confidence written in almost all his epistles pointing to himself to himself para po sabihin sa mga tao na I have done what I am telling you to do therefore follow me as I follow the Lord now if uh, if we are to live lives that are fully surrendered to the Lord here are a few things that we can see here in this passage na pwede na may kita po natin sa buhay natin as we fully surrender to the Lord here in verse 11 it says knowing therefore the terror of the Lord we persuade men but we are made manifest unto God 
and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. First point here is the persuading of men. If you are tr truly fully surrendered to the Lord, you're going to have the desire to persuade men. Sabi po dito una, before we go there, sabi po muna dito, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. The, the word terror here, is sabi, hindi ibig sabihin na natatakot ako sa Diyos. Hindi ibig sabihin na yung, pag, kailangan, yung, yung takot na gusto mong magtago, gusto mong tumakbo, gusto mong hindi na makita. But terror here means holy reverence to the Lord. Ibig sabihin ito yung, uh, uh, yung you have so much respect to the Lord that it will result in, your, uh, in a life of worship and obedience to the Lord. So knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. Uh, the Apostle Paul says here that I respect the Lord. I give reverence to the Lord. And if, if we take, if we remember in verse 10, bago po niya sabihin ito, he, quote, uh, he, he mentioned the judgment seat of Christ. He said that we must all appear in the judgment seat of Christ. Maybe he was also referencing to this that knowing that this will happen, knowing that I will someday answer to the Lord, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, I am respecting Him. I am giving Him reverence. I am I'm, I'm living a life in worship to the Lord. Ibig sabihin, this, this type of fear doesn't, hindi po ibig sabihin ng fear na pagka nanonood tayo ng horror movies. This, this type of fear means uh, uh, or results into comfort, joy, and peace. Kung talaga po may takot tayo sa Panginoon, ito po yung mag-manifest sa buhay natin. Karoon ng comfort, joy, and peace. Kasi po minsan, uh, uh, minsan po sa atin, as I always say, sa aking mga preaching, I think every preaching I say, we say one thing and we do another. We say that we respect God, we say that we fear God, we say that we love God, but we don't show it in our lives. Kaya nga po, minsan nga, pagka nga, eto si Chut, matigas ang ulo, takot po yan sa palo eh. Uh, takot na takot yan pagka nakakita ng hanger. Pero, takot lang po siya, pakita na niya yung hanger. Pag hindi niya nakikita yung hanger, hindi po siya takot. Kasi alam niyang mapapalo siya, pero gagawin niya pa rin. Di po ba? Ganun din po tayo minsan sa ating buhay. We say that we respect God, we say that we fear the Lord, but siguro nangyayari lang yun pag napalo na tayo. Pagka meron na nangyari sa buhay natin, then we respect God, then we fear the Lord. But knowing fully na mali yung gagawin natin, gagawin pa rin natin. Being in the flesh, of course, there's temptation. We have, we've seen that last, uh, the last time that I preached. Nandiyan yung, yung laging tayo na tetem because we're in the flesh and, and we, are, uh, we are blessed to be promised a new body in the future. But now, be, as, as people, as people in the flesh, uh, may kita natin, even though we reverence God, even though we try to respect Him and fear the Lord and, and obey the Word of God, meron pa rin po mga times talaga na we are going to do things that are really questionable. Para bang sabihin na talaga bang takot ka sa Panginoon? Di po ba? Talaga ba? Minsan hindi po, hindi tayo aten. Talaga bang meron tayong takot sa Panginoon? Alam po ba talaga natin ang ginawa ng Panginoon sa ating buhay? Alam ba talaga natin ang patuloy na ginagawa ng Panginoon sa ating buhay? Alam po ba natin na kung wala ang Panginoon, wala rin po tayo ngayon? Alam din po ba natin na kung wala ang Panginoon, wala ang trabaho mo, wala ang pamilya mo na mahal na mahal mo, wala, ang, wala yung kung ano man tinatamasa mo, wala ngayon. And then we have the guts to disobey Him. No, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, knowing his, 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 uh, 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 what He's doing in our lives, we are going to respect Him. Do you respect Him? Do you give reverence to the Lord? And if we are, if we do, sabi dito, we persuade men. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Now, this shows in the life of Paul. Um, every place he goes, every city he goes, unang pupuntahan niya synagogues. And uh, what he does over there is he's going to uh, uh, debate, to talk to people. Pagdating niya, kunyari, punta siya sa Corinth, hanapin niya agad yung sinagog. Pasok agad siya, may kipag-usap agad siya sa mga scholars, script, uh, people who know the scripture, and he's going to argue. Hindi po siya na pag argue na kung sports or whatever. He's arguing that telling people that Christ, whom they have slain, whom they have crucified and killed, is the Savior. Yun yung kanyang pinag-aargue sa kanila because these Jewish people, uh, these, these people do not believe that Christ is the Messiah. They believe the Messiah, but they don't believe that Christ is the Messiah. Kaya ang gagawin niya, papasok siya sa mga synagogue, he will be thrown out, uh, he will go to another city, he's going to another synagogue, and again, uh, uh, spend days there, three or four days, just trying to persuade people to believe that Christ is the Messiah. And, 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 and through this debate and through this, all of this persuading, nakakaroon po ng resulta. May kita po natin that everywhere he goes, he was able to establish churches. He was able to persuade men to believe that Christ is the Messiah. Kaya po mga kapatid, we should be also 
uh, dapat able din po tayong gawin ito sa buhay natin. What if there's a time or an opportunity presents itself that we can talk to people about our faith? How can we do that? Can we skillfully use the scripture to give reason of our faith? Paano kung merong nag, nagwi-witness ka uh, uh, dito, may mga kaibigan tayo, nagwi-witness ka iglesia ni Cristo, sinabi niya si Cristo hindi Diyos, ano sasabihin natin? Can we use the Bible and point out to them that Christ is God? Can we use the Bible and point out to them that the only way to be saved is Jesus Christ? Can we use the Bible and point to them that salvation is not of works, it is all of faith by the grace of God? Can we do that? You know, this is the life of Paul. If you really fully surrender, you're going to be ready. Always ready to give an answer of the hope that is in you. Always ready. Kaya nga po mga kapatid, hindi po totoo yung wag ka makipag-argue. Meron pong wrong way to argue, right way to argue, proper way and proper place to do that. But then, that's, that's why makita po natin, Paul does this in synagogues. Pumapasok siya doon. Kasi sa synagogue, talagang nagdi-debatehan doon. Using the scriptures, talaga nakakaroon sila ng debate. So Paul goes there and then says something, Christ is the Messiah, and then he debates against all of these people. Because as, as, as we have read in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, karam, kadalasan po, karamihan po ng tao that time, they, um, they dispute the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Kaya nga yun yung ginagawa ni Apostle Paul. Now, we persuade men. We, ha- we, we must also do this. And if we really enjoy the presence of the Lord, and if we really love and respect the Lord, we are going to persuade men to also have this experience in their lives. Kaya nga po mga kapatid, yung, yung taong ligtas at taong may Kristo sa puso na walang desire na ishare at pilitin yung ibang tao na makita ang kanilang sarili na makasalanan na kailangan nila ang Panginoon is very questionable. Kung ikaw ligtas, alam mo mo, papahamak ang kausap mo, ano po yung nararamdaman natin? Kung ikaw ay ligtas, alam mo yung kamag-anak mo mapapahamak, wala lang. Wala lang po ba? Wala lang po ba nagpupush sa atin to persuade them to look at themselves and accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Of course, hindi po tayo nagliligtas. Of course, hindi po tayo yung, yung, uh, yung, yung nag-re-regenerate sa kanila. But we are the mouthpiece of God. And without a preacher, without someone to share, it's not going to happen. That's why it is our job. We persuade men. And how? How do we do this? But we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. Hindi lang po basta salita, hindi lang po basta uh, skillful in using the Word of God, but also backing it up in the way we live. Lagi po ganyan si Paul. Whenever Paul commands them about something, he points to himself. Kasi po, napakapangit naman. Na, example, sabihin sa'yo ng tao, huwag kang mag-yosi, nag siya. Sabihin ng tao sa'yo, huwag kang uminom habang may hawak siyang beer. Diba? Sabi ng tao sa'yo, sumunod ka habang siya hindi naman sumusunod. That's why Paul understands the importance of this. Na his life backs up his preaching. His life backs up what he's saying. Kaya nga sabi niya, I keep under my body lest I, uh, I be a castaway. Baka hindi na ako paniwalaan. Maayos na nga yung buhay ni Paul. Ang dami pang accusation. Maayos na nga yung pamumuhay niya. Ang dami pang nagbibintang. Ang dami pang nagsasabing false apostle yan. Ang dami pang nagsasabing hindi totoo yung sinasabi niya. Sinungaling yan, ginagamit lang kayo. Pinagkakakitahan lang kayo. Kaya nga, Paul even went as far as not accepting support from other churches. Mayroong mga churches na hindi siya tumatanggap ng pera. Bakit? Alam niya na baka gamitin ng Diablo yung pagtanggap niya ng pera na, na, na uh, dumihan ng utak ng mga tao. You know, Paul, he really lived his life in, 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 surrender, uh, in, in full surrender to the Lord and also tried uh, to, to forget his fleshly desires, tried to forget whatever he wants para po lamang sa pagpipreach ng gospel pat, lalo maging effective. Kaya nga po mga kapatid, this all the more reason na tayo ay dapat uh, um, ingatan natin ang ating pamumuhay. Because hindi po tayo paniniwalaan. Who will believe uh, a, a person who is not living a righteous life and then we ask them to, 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 to accept the faith that we have? Wala pong maniniwala sa atin. Especially in this kind of country. Na, hindi, na, na walang kwenta yung skill mo minsan. Walang kwenta yung skill mo sa Bible, sa gantong klaseng country. They won't believe even if you open the Bible to them, verse by verse, scripture by scripture, they will, what's that? I also have a book at home. I have an English book, science book, totoo rin yung mga yun. No, they won't believe that, but they look at the way you live. Amen. Kaya nga po mga kapatid, kung tayo po ay nagsishare sa, 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 sa outreach, yun po yung tinitignan nila. Paano ba nagsasalita ito? How does he live? What, what's different with his life compared sa buhay natin? Ano yung kaya pupunta tayo outreach? Ang lulungkot ng mga mukha natin. Bah, bakit sila maniniwala? 
Di ba, pupunta tayo sa outreach? Minsan, nagtatalo pa tayo sa outreach. Bakit sila maniniwala sa atin? You know, that's why whenever we go there, we, we're not putting on a show, but we are living a, a, a life that is worthy of the gospel. That is all we have to do. That is para masabi po natin itong mga sinasabi ni Apostle Paul so that we can claim this in our lives. Kaya sabihin natin sa kanila, importante that you come to the outreach every Saturday to worship the Lord. Pero pag minsan, ikaw din mismo, pag Sunday, wala sa simbahan. Ano po yun? Para bang, luloko mo lang kami, pinapunta mo kami sa outreach, ikaw hindi ka naman nag Di po ba? That's why, it's the, kaya ka po ito rin ay mensahe sa aming mga preacher na tumatayo sa likod ng pulpito. To be, to back up our preaching with our lives. And we're not perfect as, as, as Kuya Alex said kanina. Si Kuya Alex, binago na niya yung pangalan ng preaching ni, ni Kuya Harrison. Hanap po, eh, ginawang ana ni Kuya Harrison. Kuya Alex eh, nabago eh. Hindi <laughs> na kay JV. Pero, pero naalala kasi yung we are not perfect eh. So, we, hindi po kami perfect Magkakabalit, magkakamali, but na, dapat po nakikita sa buhay namin at na, nagpupumilit po kami, sinusubukan namin at we are striving to back up our preaching with our lives. I'm not saying na, okay, you sit there, look at the preacher, husgahan mo yung buhay niya, pag hindi maayos, wag mong pakinggan. No. Individual responsibility yan. Kung ako, hindi maayos ang buhay ko, nagpipreach ako, pananagot ako sa Panginoon. Pero kung ang pinipreach ko ay tama, pero dahil ayaw mo yung buhay ko, hindi ka nakinig, hindi ka sumunod, yan ang pananagutan mo rin sa Panginoon. Okay, that is, uh, yun po yung uh, uh, responsibility. We are made manifest unto God. The Bible, uh, uh, Paul says that again in a lot of verses, but let's read Acts 24.16. And herein do I exercise myself. So, nag, siguro nagbabasketball to si, the, the way he lives. To have always a conscience, ano daw, void of offense toward God and toward man. Talaga pong nagpupumilit siya, sinusubukan niya that I will not be blamed when I preach. I will not be blamed when I preach. I, will, I can boldly and confidently tell people that God is my witness. I have lived a righteous life. Therefore, follow me as I follow Christ. Siya, pa lang, siya lang po talaga yung may karapatan magsabing follow me. Why? Because it's following Christ. Kaya nga po, and, and, I don't know, if anyone can stand behind this pulpit and say follow me, if we're not following Christ. Marami po nagsasabi uh, sa pulpito ngayon ng follow me and it stops there. Follow me and it stops there. But Apostle Paul confidently says that why? Because he knows, again, God is his witness that I am following Christ. Now, a fully surrendered life to the Lord will have respect to Him. And if we have respect and holy reverence toward God, we're going to persuade men to have this also. And we're go- we do that by skillfully using the Word of God and li- backing up our preaching and our message by our lives. Let's, let's move on. Verse number 12 and 13. For we command not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance and not in heart. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God, or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. And here in uh, second point here, makita po natin dito yung purpose. Yung purpose po ng tao na fully surrendered to God. The purpose of Paul's life is clear in these two verses. To glorify the Lord. That is the purpose of his life. I, uh, I am to glorify the Lord. Even in using his life as an example. Nakita niyo po dito yung mga words ni Apostle Paul. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance. Sabi ni Paul, even though I constantly point to my life, and, and ask God uh, as a witness na, na, sabihin, na alam nyo talaga na yung buhay ko ay tama, hindi ko pinagyayabang, sabi niyo po. I'm doing this so that you can glorify God because of what He has done in my life. Yung kala pong testimony yung ginagawa niya. Testimony yung ginagawa niyo po. I'm giving you a testimony that I was persecuted, yet tum- patuloy pa rin ako. Uh, people are trying to kill me, yet buhay pa rin ako. I am in prison, yet I'm still rejoicing. All of these things, I'm telling you why. Not to boast, but for you to glorify the Lord. Para makita nyo naman. Because these people here in Corinth are very uh, carnal people. They are people who look at things uh, uh, on the way they appear and not... In, in, in the eyes of faith. Kaya si Paul lagi niya sinasabi, hey, compare your life to me as I'm following Christ. And, it's, and if you see that this is happening to me, glorify the Lord and follow what I'm doing. That is what the Apostle Paul is doing. He's sharing his testimony. Kaya nga po, wag po tayong mahiya sa pag-share ng ating testimony. Hindi po tayo nagyayabang. 
Mahiya ka kung magte-testimony ka kasi nagyayabang ka lang. Kahiya mo yun. But kung nagte-testimony ka because you want to show people what God has done in your life, then by all means, do it. Gawin po natin. Why? Because people will glorify God because of it. Kahit po simpleng bagay na may sinagot ng Panginoon sa ating buhay or prayer, pinagaling tayo sa ating nararamdaman, binigyan tayo ng pagpapala, glorify God by, by, by sharing into a testimony. Nalalim po yung buhay ni Peter when he was freed from prison and then he went to the house of the person that I forgot the name and then nag, kasi nagpe-pray sila doon, okay? Roda ata o Roda yung sumagot ng, ng pinto. Basta si Ate Faith yun eh. Roda na sumagot ng pin, sumagot ng pinto and then he knocked and then said, "The Lord has freed me from from prison." Ano sabi niya agad? Ipamalita niyo agad ang ginawa ng Panginoon sa akin. That is what you need to do. When God answers your prayer, when God gives you something, when God does something in your life, testify and glorify the Lord because of it. So that other people will be encouraged as well. Kasi po dito sa dito sa uh, problema nito mga one problem of these uh, people here at, at Corinth is that humuhusga po sila sa kanila kung ano yung nakikita nila. Kaya sabi dito ni Paul, um, have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance and not in heart. Kaya nga po, meron po mga tao dito sa Corinthian Church that Paul is referencing to na huwag niyong tignan kung ano yung appearance because Paul himself, hindi siya maayos tignan na. Kasi, bugbog. Halos mamatay na nga siya. Kulong. ba diba? Meron pa siyang sakit. Hindi po siya magandang tignan. And even though maybe magaling siya magsalita, maybe, pero hindi po siya siguro kasing galing ng mga tao na, 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 na pumapasok sa mga churches to deceive people. But he's telling them, hey, don't be deceived with what you see. Because these people are trying their best to look nice. These people are trying their best to speak nice, to speak in a good way, to glorify themselves only. But you have to you have to look at people who are glorifying the Lord. Ganyan po yung problema sa panahon natin ngayon. Nakikita po natin kung ano yung 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 anong maganda sa mata. Kaya pag yung maganda, malaki ang simbahan, praise the Lord. Maganda ang saksakin ng pastor, uh, he, he must be doing right in the eyes of God. Maraming pera yung pastor, uh, he must be a good pastor. Maganda yung bahay, uh, he, he must be uh, ma, ma, marahil tama yung talaga yung ginagawa nila. Mga kapatid, ito na po yung mistake ni Samuel. When he was trying to look for the next king, of Israel di po ba dito sa 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 6 to 7 and it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said surely the Lord's anointed is before him kasi ma- maayos ma- ma- matipuno matangkad siguro magandang ma- uh, guapo but the Lord said unto Samuel look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature because I have refused him for the Lord seeth not as man seeth for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Ganyan po dapat, that's the way we look at people. Kaya nga po hindi basta magaling mag-preach, hahangaan. Dapat po alam po natin kung bakit siya nag-preach. Is he glorifying himself? And then praise the Lord na kaya na rin po natin itong gawin because we have the Holy Spirit to give us discernment with people. Kaya nga po hindi tayo, tayo yung mga tao hindi dapat basta-basta naluloko. Why? Because we have this, the eyes of faith. Uh, God is giving us this wisdom para po uh, makita natin. This is why we should not judge uh, people with the way they look. We should not judge the, the size of a church, the money of a pastor, his car, his looks, the way he speaks. Husgahan po natin, is he preaching what is right? Is he glorifying the Lord in what he's doing? Is this church glorifying the Lord? Is this church striving to do what is right? Kaya po kahit konti lang, kung lahat po ay pure, at, at sinusubukang uh, i-please ang Panginoon to worship Him and to have lives that are in accordance to the Word of God, that is a God-glorifying church. Pero kung konti na lang nga, bale-balentong pa, lalo na. Lalo na pong wala, di ba? Kaya nga po dapat sa small number ng, ng, ng people dito sa church natin, dapat lalo tayong nag strive nagtutulungan, para po make sure that everyone here is glorifying the Lord. Okay? We should not... We should, we should let the eyes of faith uh, dictate the way we see things. Second Corinthians 5.7, we studied that last week. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Now, tuloy natin yung verse. I think this is verse 13. For whether we be beside ourselves. Ibig sabihin po nitong beside ourselves, sabihin nito crazy. Sira ulo. Whether, sabihin ng if you're beside yourself, that means may topak ka. Okay? Uh, hindi yung topak lang na mainit ang ulo mo. Yung para bang mukha ka talagang baliw. Okay? Whether we be beside ourselves, because Paul looks crazy to people. 
And also, we look crazy to unbelievers as well because of the way we live and, and what we, 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 uh, we do in our lives. Pero sabi ni Paul, whether, even if we look crazy, even if we look bad while doing it, it is to God. Para pa rin sa Panginoon. Or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. Kaya nga po sabi, sabi ni Paul, kahit anong nangyayari, we, we look crazy, we, 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 we look okay, um, persecuted kami, hindi kami persecuted, may pagkain, wala, may pera, wala, it is for the glory of God. That is the purpose of our lives, to glorify the Lord. And Christian, if your, if your life is fully surrendered to the Lord, it should glorify the Lord. Whether we, therefore you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of the Lord. Our lives should be glorifying the Lord. Hindi po ang ating sarili. Okay lang na magpaganda, okay lang na maging maayos ang itsura, but hey, we're not doing that so that people will praise us. Okay lang na kumanta dito, na maganda ang boses mo, uh, bigay mo yung best mo, but you are not doing that for the applause of men. Okay lang na mag-preach ka, you study, you shout, you jump, whatever you do, but you are not doing that so that people will look at you. You are doing this so that people will glorify the Lord on your behalf. Okay? The, um, sabi, ni Paul, sabi ni Paul dito, let's go back to, the, to the, the word whether we be beside ourselves. You know people, tayo po, that is the way the world looks at Christians. We are beside ourselves. So we're crazy. While on Sundays, they're having their family time, pasyal day, kain sa labas, ganto ganyan, we're spending time together here in the service. They don't understand why. They don't. Kahit nasabi, alam nila, oh, they're worshiping their God, but they don't really understand why. Kahit po nakikita nila na, na, na we, put away, uh, we put aside our dreams, yung, yung ating mga pangarap, and then follow the Lord, they don't understand why. And if people say that you're crazy in your decisions, if people say that, para ka naman baliw, pwede, pwede naman itong trabaho na to, ba't yan pa yung trabaho mo? Pwede naman ito yung gawin mo, ba't yan pa ang ginagawa mo? Mas maraming pera dito, mas maraming opportunity dito. Why are you there? Anong ginagawa mo dyan? Hey, they don't understand. You look crazy. At the back of their mind, sira ulo ka ata eh. You're throwing away your future for what you can't see. But if you look crazy, mga kapatid, you're in good company. The, the Bible says here in Mark chapter 3, verse 21 and 22, And when his friends heard of it, they went out to lay hold on him. This is the Lord Jesus Christ. For they said, He is beside himself. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath Beelzebub. Hindi lang sinabing sira hulo si Kristo. Sinabi pa, sinasapian. And by the prince of the devils casteth he out devils. John chapter 10 verse 20. And many of them said, He hath a devil and is mad. Why hear ye him? Kung tingin po sa atin ng, ng mga tao ay para tayong mga sira hulo at mga baliw. We're in good company because that's the way they look at Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 26, verse 24, the Apostle Paul. And as he this, uh, he this spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself, much learning doth make thee mad. Laigo po itong nababasa sa Facebook. Dami mong alam. Diba? Sobrang dami mong alam. Baliw ka na. Diba? Yun po yung tingin sa atin ng mga tao. That's why you, you reason out with them. You tell them the Lord. You tell them that God is true. You open the Bible. Ang dami mo namang alam. Ano po yung, alam ko kung, kung sikat din yung expression na yan sa ibang lugar. Pero sa Pampanga, sikat po kasi yung dakal mo balo ne, balo mo nga ne, ika na. Yun po yung lagi sinasabi. Yun yung sabi, ang dami mong alam, no? alam mo lahat. No? Sige, ikaw na, ikaw na magaling. Yung ganyan yung mga tao, eh. yun tingin sa atin. Yun yung sabi ni Festus kay Paul. Eh. Ang dami mong alam, much learning hath made thee mad. Nabaliw ka na sa kakaaral. This is, this is what, how, how the Lord, how the world looks at us. People think it's foolish to live for Christ. People think it's foolish to invest in eternity. People think it's foolish to live the way the Bible wants us to live. People think it's foolish to believe that there are only two genders. Pinagpipilita po natin na lalaki at babae lang. And people look at us like, you're crazy. Hindi lang, kita mo nga may bakla eh. Ayun na nga yung bakla, lalaki, babae lang. Ang kulit mo naman. Para sa kanila, we're crazy. We, kasi pinapipila tayo. People think it's foolish to honor the Lord by going to church every Sunday. To them, they don't understand. People think it's foolish to be a woman and stay at home take care, taking care of your family. Ngayon po, they despise housewives. They despise uh, uh, wives na ang kanilang first, and, uh, uh, first priority in life are, are their husbands and their children. Hindi na po sikat ngayon yan. Hindi na po popular opinion ngayon yan. Sa ngayon, women has to be successful. Women has to be on top. Women has to be equal with men. Pag, meron pa nga po mga tao na pag, na babae na pag buksan mo ng pinto, magagalit sa'yo. Basta tingin mo, hindi ko kaya buksan ng pinto sarili ko. Meron po mga ganyan sa ibang bansa. Ba? Sa tingin mo, hindi ko kayang, uh, hindi ko kayang gawin yan. Porke lalaki ka, babae ko, 
uh, masama yung ugali po. Para sa kanila ganyan. Ayaw lang nilang tinutulungan. Bakit? Equal lang tayo eh. O, pero pagka pag, pagbuhate mo na mabigat, hindi kaya. Diba, parang ano lang eh, no? Pero but, but people think it's foolish. Kaya nga po, hindi na po, people think it's foolish not to live life to the fullest. Kaya nga po sa atin, why you're staying in one place? There are people who are going around the world enjoying their lives to the fullest, but they don't know na pagkatapos ng buhay na to, there's an, a whole eternity waiting for them that, that they have to answer for their lives. Kaya nga po mga kapatid, it's, we, we look foolish. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 10 to 13. We are fools for Christ's sake. 1 Corinthians 4, verse 10. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst, and are naked and are buffeted, and have no certain dwelling place, and labor, working with our hands, being reviled, we bless, being persecuted, we suffer it, being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world, and are of the offs of scoring of all things unto this day. The word of scoring here is the Greek word per peripsema, which means what is wiped off or scrapings or the dust from the floor. Yan po tayo in the eyes of this world. If this world persecuted Christ, if this world despised Christ, if this world rejected our God, how much more ano pang gagawin sa atin ng mundo? Kaya mga kapatid, don't, let's not seek the acceptance of this world. Wag po natin subukan na mahalin tayo ng mundo. Kaya po nakakapagtaka yung mga Kristiyano daw na gusto nilang sumikat. Kristiyano daw na gusto nilang mahalin ng mundo. Kristiyano daw na gusto nilang tanggapin sila ng mundo. Mga kapatid, it is impossible. Even Christ hindi tinanggap sila pa kaya. Kaya nga, tumatak po sila sa politics. Why? They have to be accepted of the world or else they will not win. So they strive to do that. Kaya nagpapailaw ng groto, nagpapaprint ng mga uh, black na kung anong mga nazarin na yan, kung ano-anong ginagawa. Kahit nasabihin na lang pastor sila, magaling sila sa Bible, mga kapatid, they are living as if they don't really know anything from the Bible. If they despise Christ, if they despise Paul, if they despise all of these Christians, anong sa tingin nila sa sarili nila para mahalin sila ng mundo? Kaya nga, dapat magtaka sila pag nanhalo sila at minahalo sila ng mundo, yun nakakapagtaka. Ginusto sila ng mundo. That is something that is uh, 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 questionable to me. To them, our lives are foolish. Our message is foolishness para sa kanila. That's why, mga kapatid, our life's purpose is to glorify the Lord whether we look good or bad doing it. We look good or bad doing it, we glorify the Lord. Verse number 14, anong oras na ba? Kaya pa ito matatapos. Verse 14 and 15, For the love of Christ constraineth us. Ito po yung maganda. Because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Here, If, you're, if you have fully surrendered life, not only that you're going to persuade men, not only that your purpose is going to glorify God, but you're going to realize the power of Christ's love in your life. The Bible says here that for the love of Christ constraineth us. The word constraineth here doesn't mean na pinipigilan or whatever. The word here constraineth in Greek is sunecho, which means to hold together with constraint, to control, to overwhelm, to press on every side. This word was used also during this time. Yung parang pag yung cattle ay pinupush on every side para to hold him to a place where he can receive medication. That is the thought of that. Kaya nga po sabi ng Bible, the love of Christ, ang pamamahal ni Christo that He has shown on the cross, He has shown uh, 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 on these people, kahit na po sa panahon na to, there were people who saw in person the sufferings of Christ, that this love of Christ is constraining them to live for Him. Sabi dito, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto Him which died for them and rose again. No, Christ has shown His love. Hindi lang po basta natin nababasa sa Bible, nararamdaman natin sa ating buhay. Hindi lang po basta natin nararamdaman sa ating buhay, alam po natin ang ginawa niya sa, uh, sa krus ng Kalbaryo para, dahil po sa kanyang pagmamahal sa atin. Mga kapatid, Christ has shown His love. What is your response for that love? Ano yung response, response mo? Pagka po mayroong tao na nag-express ng pagmamahal sa iyo, you have to respond. Pag sinabi, sinabihan kang I love you at hindi ka nag-respond, Anong, 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 anong ibig sabihin nun? Wala akong pakilam. Wala akong pakilam. I don't love you, right? But, but Christ loving us, and we say that we love Christ, ano talaga yung response natin? Hindi lang po salita. Hindi lang I love you too, Lord. Hindi lang po ganon. 
makikita po yan sa buhay natin. Christ's love should be motivating us in our lives. Lagi po yan ang nagmamotivate sa atin. That means whatever we do is because we love God. Whatever we do is because we love Christ. We're not doing it for ourselves. We're living for Him. We love Him. Therefore, we do these things. Ano po yung nagmamotivate sa'yo sa buhay? Is it the love of Christ? Minsan nga po, the love of Christ can't even push us out of bed every Sunday. Ganun po ba kahina ang pagmamahal ng Panginoon sa ating buhay na hindi man lang natin kaya na umaten sa simbahan? Na ganun lang po ba ka, kahina ang pagmamahal ng Panginoon na hindi tayo kaya itulak na lalo pang kumilo sa kanyang ministeryo at ibigay ang ating buhay sa kanya? Ganun lang po ba nagmanifest ang pagmamahal ng Panginoon sa ating buhay? I know that the death of Christ's love, there's no death. Na, na, ang, ang scope nito is something that we can't even imagine. Pero minsan sa buhay po natin, hindi po ito totoo. Na parang wala pong pagmamahal ng Panginoon sa ating buhay. That we are doing things that are not honor, honoring the Lord. You know, the response of Paul is this. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The, Paul says, Christ loved me. Christ showed his love for me. Christ keeps showing his love for me. I will live for him. That should be the response. Ang liwanag po ng verse dito, ng verse dito going back to our text, sabi niya, For the love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all, gives Christ, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, bakit daw? That they which live. Sino yung mga yun? Tayo yung mga tumanggap. Tayo yung mga naligtas. We which live. We're not dead in sin. That they which live should not henceforth, na hindi na, from now on, live unto themselves. Kaya namatay si Kristo para sa atin. Para yung mga naligtas, simula ngayon, simula nung time na naligtas ka, will not live unto yourself. Hindi ka naman mumuhay para sa iyo, but unto him, na namatay, which died for them and rose again. Very clear. Kaya po tayo niligtas ng Panginoon so that we live for Him. Kaya nga po, very questionable ang tao, believer, na namumuhay para sa sarili. Very questionable po, pag ang isang tao, ang desisyon niya, pakabeg, pakabeg. Gagawin ko to para sa akin, gagawin ko to para sa akin, para sa akin. Kapatid, sabi dito, kaya nga namatay si Kristo para hindi ka mamuhay sa sarili mo, para mamuhay ka kay Kristo. Okay, that is the, uh, we are going to realize the love of Christ. Uh, let's, let's, let's go on quickly, verse 16 and 17. Wherefore, wherefore uh, again, uh, referencing to the salvation that Christ is giving us, the previous verses, wherefore, henceforth, from now, know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now, henceforth, we know Him no more. Verse number, uh, uh, point number four, mag-iiba po yung perception natin. Kung tayo, tayo po'y tunay na surrendered sa Panginoon, uh, surrender buhay natin, mag-iiba po yung perception natin. Mag-iiba po yung tingin natin sa tao. We're going to see people as lost souls that in, are in need of Christ. If you look at the life of Apostle Paul, he's, very, uh, he's a prejudice, a man with a lot of prejudice. Ayaw niya yung Kristiyano, gusto niya, ayaw niya yung mga race that is uh, uh, inferior to him, pinapersecute niya ito. But then, when once he knew Christ, once he, 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 he uh, uh, got saved, nag-iba na po ang tingin niya sa mga tao. Now, he sees everyone as someone in need of Christ. Kapatid, alam po yung perception natin sa tao? Meron din ba tayong prejudice? Meron din po ba tayong mga tao na hindi natin gusto? Meron din po ba tayong mga tao that we look at them and then we say that we don't like them? Huwag na natin i-share. Huwag na natin silang tulungan. Wala po po walang ganun. Uh, if your life is truly surrendered to the Lord, your, your, your perception of man will change. This is a person who needs Christ. And I need to share the gospel to him. What, however he smells, whatever he looks like, whatever the color of his skin is, kahit anong lingwahe pang sinasa, uh, naintindihan niya, kung kaya ko rin sabihin, I will share the gospel to him. That should be the way we look at people. Pagdating po sa simbahan, do we hate other people? Do we have prejudice on other people? Meron po ba tayo dito mga Kristiyano na alam natin nag struggle but because we don't like them, wag na lang tulungan. No, this the Apostle Paul said, even this Corinthian Church has written letters to these people na patuloy lang siyang binibigyan ng problema. Pero hindi po yun ang tingin niya. Ang tingin niya, hey, they need Christ, they need help. I will, I'm going to do this. This is a complete change from what he was to what he is now. Bakit? The, the next verse says, Therefore, again, what is therefore? Now, because uh, God has saved us, because God has died for us and raised, uh, raised us up and saved us, therefore, if any man be in Christ, na tumanggal sa Panginoon, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. 
Behold, all things are become new. Which is true. From, he, from Apostle Paul, a guy with a lot of prejudice, to a person who sees people differently now, everything completely changed. Kung meron pong tao that can, can claim this verse completely is the Apostle Paul. Because it, his life completely changed. Mga kapatid, yung tao pong ligtas, na tunay na ligtas, ay magkakaroon po ng pagbabago sa kanyang buhay. Hindi po sikretong pagbabago. Hindi po yung pagbabago na, eh, hintayin mo lang, magkakaroon din ng pagbabago. No, no. The Bible says, Behold, you can see it. You can see the change in the person's life. May kita nyo po na yung tao na dating ganito, hindi na siya ganyan. Dating ma- ma- dumi ang b- bunganga, hindi na madumi ang bunganga. Dating maraming bisyo, wala na po masyadong bisyo. Da- dating walang pakilam sa mga things of God, now he loves the things of God. A person who, will, who is really in Christ is going to be changed. And, and, and a person who is really truly surrendered to God is going to be changed. Of course, this can, this can also talk about sanctification, na patuloy nangyayari sa ating buhay, na patuloy pa rin tayong binabago every day until the time that we, are, we have been called home. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 22 says that ye put off concerning the former conversation of the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Na yun ang ginagawa nung dati. Kung anong gusto nang laman natin, yun ang ginagawa natin. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that ye put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. We are, we are, we are now new people because of God. Being believers, a lot has changed in our lives. Kung titignan niyo po yung dating yung buhay, you're not even proud of it anymore. You're not even proud of what you did before. You're not even proud of the kind of person you are before. But God has changed you. And, and, and what has changed in our lives? Uh, isa isa lang natin to. We, ha- we have a new birth. Jo- John chapter 3 verse 3 says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. If you are born again, you have a new birth, you, are, you have been born again into a new man. Not only a new birth, but you have a new heart and a new spirit. Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 26 says, A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. Kaya nga po yung mga matigas ang puso, pang unbeliever po yan. Yung mga puso na hindi mo ma, hindi ma-persuade ng salita ng Panginoon, pang unbeliever po yan. Kaya mga kapatid, I can boldly say this, kung hindi po tayo ma-persuade ng salita ng Panginoon, kung hindi po dating kaya mag-response sa salita ng Panginoon, kapatid, hindi ka ligtas. That is the only explanation. Because an, an, an unbelieving heart is a stony heart na hindi po natin kaya mag-response sa Panginoon. Hindi po tayo. Maybe there's something wrong. Hindi lang po, okay, maybe one, two, three weeks, medyo matigas ang puso mo, you're going through something, pero yung buo na lang Christian life mo, matigas ang puso mo, kapatid, hindi ka Kristiyano talaga. And because the Bible says, I will give you a heart that is not stony, a heart of flesh na malambo that can respond to the Word of God. The Bible says, my sheep uh, 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 hear me and I know them, uh, hear, they hear my voice and they follow me, something like that. I'm sure mali ako. But it, it means that the sheep, tao, mga, yung mga tupa, yung mga tao ligtas, they know the voice of the Lord and when they hear that, they follow Him. Okay? That is, that, that is uh, what the Bible says. We are a new man. Ephesians 4.24 And that He put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Kaya po kung walang pagbabago, kapatid, I'm sorry, there's never a new birth in the first place. We have been given a new song. Psalms chapter 40 verse 3 And He hath put a new song in my mouth even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. We have been given a new song. That, that means yung kinakat, mga awit na ng puso natin, kahit yung mga kinakata natin, something that is glorifying the Lord. Hindi na po yung, yung mga dati na gustong-gusto nating mga awitin. Minsan lumilitaw pa rin yan sa ating mga bibig. Pero po dapat, kinakalimutan na natin yan. Mga paborito ni Deo, eh. Kailan kaya huling makakatawa? Anong lyrics na? Na hindi ko pinipilit. Wala lungkot na sumisilip. Eh po, yung, dapat hindi na yung mga kinakata natin. Um, naalala ko lang kasi dati, ano ko yan eh. Uh, pag naka-headset ka na, it's nakahiga ka. Na-feel na feel mo na yung mga ganyang awitin. OPM, OPM. Pero po hindi na po, because that is not glorifying the Lord. God has given us a new song. Kaya po minsan, pag sa karaoke, bigay todo. Pagka jamming-jamming, bigay todo. Pag sa simbahan, he lives, he lives. Isang awit pa, pambihira. Gusto ko na umupo. Kapatid, 
Ano, ano po yun? Bakit hindi natin kaya bigay yung best natin sa pag-awit sa simbahan? Pero pag ibang ang aawitin, gustong-gusto natin. Kapatid, that is, there's something wrong in your heart. There's something wrong in your heart. That means, uh, that was, check natin ang puso natin because God is really concerned with your heart. And whether your heart is in the right, right place or not. A new name, Isaiah 62 verse 2, And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, and all kings thy glory, and thou shalt be called by a new name which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Kaya po ako hindi na po Jong yung pangalan ko. James Reed na po. Okay? Kasi ligtas na po ako ngayon eh. Ligtas na. So, call me James Reed, guys. James Reed. Sabihin, someday, we're going to be given a new name. Sabi sa Revelation, bibigyan ka ng Panginoon ng stone. Yung stone na yun, just written a name. And no one can know that name except you. Because that is the name that God has, that has given you. Pero nasabi ko na yun sa akin. Uh, yun po talaga yun sa akin na kita ka na yan. Not only a new name, but a new home. John chapter 14, verse 1 to 2. Let not your heart be troubled. Mga kapatid, huwag po kayong malungkot. Ye believe in God. If you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I wouldn't have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And not only that, but last week we've studied, we're going to be given a new body. That's why me being new creatures, marami po nagbago sa ating buhay. Kaya kung wala nagbago, kapatid, Hindi ko po alam kung meron new birth in the first place. And number uh, number 5. Verse 18 and 20. Yung iba talim na ng tingin ng iba kaya dito na lang ako titingin, hindi na ako titingin sa inyo. Verse 18 to 20. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto him. Self, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are what ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Number five, fully being fully surrendered to God, we have a new position. The Bible says we are the ambassadors of Christ. The Bible says here that all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to Himself. The word reconcile here means to remove the enmity. We know that because of sin, because of Adam and, uh, and Eve sinning, our relationship with God has been cut, but through Jesus Christ's sacrifice, dying on the cross and raised, or rising up again, we God has purchased the way of salvation and for those who have accepted Him and put our faith in Him, we, uh, the, the Lord has reconciled us unto Himself. He has removed this enmity in the relationship. Now, because you're saved, because you say that you're saved and your life is fully surrendered to the Lord, you are an ambassador for Christ. You know, the, here in, in, the, in the time of this writing, uh, we know that Rome is ruling during this place. And, and, and during this time, there are two kinds of provinces in Rome. The one is a senatorial province and an imperial province province. Ibig sabihin po ng senatorial province, ito po yung mga probinsya na nagbigay ng allegiance sa Rome. That means kami yung mga uh, nag-submit sa inyo. Pero po itong mga imperial province, ito yung mga hindi nagbigay ng allegiance sa Rome. That means these are people who says that anytime pwede sila mag-rebelde uh, against Rome. Anytime they can fight against Rome. That's why ang ginagawa po nitong Rome, they're putting up ambassadors in these places to make sure na walang rebellion na mangyayari. Kaya ka the Bible says, we are ambassadors of Christ. And we are in this world. And we know, being an ambassador, yung sabihin, foreigner ka. Kung may ambassador dito na, 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 of the Philippines, hindi siya taga rito. But he's just representing the Philippines. Kaya ka po mga kapatid, we are ambassadors. We are citizens of heaven. We are from heaven. We are not of this world. But yet, we are in this world. Why? To, to, to reconcile this world because this world is in rebellion to God. Okay, in rebellion against God, uh, I, I should say, they're rebellion against God. That's why tayo, like, like ambassadors of old times, we are to be the ones to, ang, ang mensahe po natin is one message of peace. Message of pe telling people, be reconciled to God. Yung po, that's why we are here. We're telling them to be reconciled to God, not to rebel to the Lord. We are representing heaven. Kaya nga po dito yung mga ambassadors ng ibang bansa, they keep, Kaya sila mismo, they try to live in a good manner because they're representing their country. That means the, uh, their country is being judged by this one person. Imagine the pressure. The Lord, heaven, the Bible can and will be judged by your life. Kaya ka po, uh, nakakalungkot, meron pong minsan words na pagkatalagang nasira mo yung testimony mo, 
Nakagawa ka ng hindi magandang bagay. May mga tao magsasabi sa'yo, huwag ka na lang mag-post ng mga Bible verse. Huwag ka na lang magsalita tungkol sa Diyos. Hindi naman totoo yan. You know, because that means you, repres- you misrepresent heaven. You misrepresent God. Now, a, a person who is truly su- surrendered to the Lord, kapatid, we are representing the Lord. We are representing heaven. We are in this world. We are not of this world. But we are showing this world what a citizen of heaven should be. Kaya kapatid, that is something that we should take seriously. Something that we should take very seriously. Philippians chapter 3, verse 20 says, For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. I have a sixth point here, but we're not going to go there. Let's just read the verse. Verse 21, For He hath made Him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. And I think this verse caps uh, uh, very, uh, very well this chapter. We are to be fully surrendered to God. Why? Because God has bought us with a precious price. It took the blood of Christ. It took a sinless Christ who knew no sin to be sin for us. It took that. It took Him dying on the cross. It took Him being mocked. It took Him being scorned. Uh, putting on a thorn, uh, a, 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 a crown of thorns. Mga kapatid, Hindi po na, we cannot even start to imagine what really happened to the Lord Jesus Christ. Movies try to, to show us exactly what happened, but the Bible says uh, in the Old Testament, there's no beauty in Him. Hindi mo man lang recognize kung tao o hayop yung naka, naka, naka-crucify dun sa cross na yun. Mga kapatid, that is the price He had to pay for us. That's why for because of that, because we are ambassadors, because of all these things, persuade men. Because of all these things, live for the glory of God. Because of all these things, let the love of Christ push you to do, to do things for the Lord. Because of all this, because of these things that God has done for us, look at men the way God wants us to see men. Because of these things, we should live as ambassadors of God and represent heaven uh, in the correct way here on earth. Kapatid, is your life fully surrendered to the Lord? Can you see these points in your life? Nakita niyo po ba sa inyong buhay na you have the desire to persuade men? Nakita niyo po ba sa inyong buhay na you respect the Lord? Nakita niyo po ba sa inyong buhay na lahat ng ginagawa ko is to glorify the Lord? Nakita niyo po ba sa inyong buhay that yung, yung pagmamahal ng Panginoon is continually pushing me to do more for the Lord? Nakita niyo po ba sa inyong buhay na meron po tayong pagmamahal sa lahat that is equal, na no prejudice sa mga tao? And do you see that you're representing the Lord uh, in the correct way here on earth? Kung hindi po, the challenge for you this morning is, please, Surrender your life fully to the Lord. I, 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 I can't say na lahat po sa bagay, ng bagay sa buhay ko is really fully surrendered to the Lord. But that is the goal. To be fully surrendered to the Lord. That means everything. Surrender to the Lord. And let the Lord work in our lives. Tayo po yung manalangin. Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning. For the preaching, for your word, for, for the uh, principles from the Bible na kita po namin. I hope and I pray, Panginoon, na kayo po ang patuloy na kumilos sa aming buhay, na patuloy po kami mag-submit, Panginoon, sa inyong salita. And that we are going to be humble enough, Panginoon, to see na mas marunong po kayo sa amin, that your word knows better, that your word knows what we're going through, that, that you have written in your word everything that we need, Panginoon, para po mamuhay ng tama dito sa mundong ito. Panginoon, help us na, na tanggalin po yung pride sa aming buhay. Sometimes we think that we know better, that's why we do it our way. But uh, Lord, I, I hope and pray that we'll fully surrender to you. And as we, uh, and as we uh, go to our invitation, Panginoon, this morning, we'd like to ask everyone to stand that, uh, uh, tignan po natin ang ating buhay, Compare that to the scriptures, compare